guys, welcome back to our channel, A Dusty Diamond. I'm Amber and today is Wednesday, so we're going to be doing What If Wednesday, which is a chapter out of the book, What If God Wrote Your Bucket List by J. Paylantner. And in this book, it's like the author's idea of what God would have you to do if he wrote your bucket list for you, what, what would be important to him. So normally we just read the chapter, which is like one or two pages, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. If you're new here, I'm Amber. Um, I do this channel with my sister Mariah, but because of the social distancing, she's not able to be here. So it's just me filming. I'm going to be reading by myself today instead of splitting it up, which kind of helps break it up and makes it seem not so long. Hang with me. I promise there's a point at the end. Today's is number 25 and the title of it is Make Sure You Are Missed. It says, the previous chapter was about your responsibility to reach back into the past to make sure your, the heritage of your parents and their parents is not forgotten. This chapter is about your legacy. It's especially important if you're a parent or have young kids in your life. I didn't cry at my grandfather's funeral. He was 78. I was a junior in college. I grew up in the Chicago suburbs about two hours from where Nana and Grandpa lived, and I probably saw them four to five times a year. My family would drive up to Racine, Wisconsin for Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter. Occasionally, they would drive down, but the visits were short and not memorable. Maybe they weren't comfortable spending the night. Maybe they had better things to do. Doing the math, over my first 20 years of life, I would have had about 100 chances to interact with my father's parents. All the short visits at our house or theirs were stiff and pretty much uncomfortable. But every year in early August, we would spend an entire week with them up at Pine Lake in North Wisconsin. Those days were not awkwardly stiff at all, and they were filled with catching fish, gutting fish, eating fish, swimming, hiking, playing family-friendly games, and sitting around the fireplace in a big cabin that held about a dozen members of my extended family. All solid memories. Going up north for, ex for extended time with Nana and Grandpa gave me a taste of what a relationship between kids and grandparents could be, but only a taste. The wonderful annual experience on the lake still did not create enough closeness to stir any true depth of feeling for Grandpa Fritz when he passed away. I didn't really know the man, and vice versa. At the time, I didn't realize what I had missed. I also will never know if Grandpa Fritz had any regrets. Standing in dramatic contrast is is the wake and funeral service of my own father just four years ago. In front of a room full of mourners, my four sons each spent a few minutes sharing heartfelt personal memories of time spent with Papa. The words spoke by Alec, Randall, Max, and Isaac all reflected the intimate relationship they had with my dad, of which even I was jealous. The funeral parlor and the church overflowed with laughter and weeping. While they spoke, all four young men had to stop more than once to gather their composure and brush back streaming tears. It was a beautiful thing. It was a tribute to a relation to what a relationship between grandparents and grandkids can be. How do relationships like that happen? Well, it's not by accident. I can look back and discern three specific decisions that led to the incomparable bond between my dad and my kids. At the time, we didn't realize the full magnitude of those life choices. One of my first fit one of my first memories of my own fatherhood was visiting my parents with our firstborn, Alec. He was just a few weeks old. Rita and I had been trying to figure out if she would be able to be the best mom in the world and also juggle some kind of income producing career. Sitting in my parents' kitchen, I broached the topic of their availability as babysitters. My dad, who, who clearly loved Alec more than anything in the world, took a moment to consider the magnitude of the request. Finally, he said, we will be there for anything you need, anytime, any place. But please, let's not intentionally create a situation in which, our grandson, in which our grandson is a burden to us. In the moments, my dad's replay felt a bit harsh, but we soon realized it was brilliant. Those words led to a critical early decision for Rita and me in our role as parents. Our children would deliver only joy to their grandparents. We would never guilt them into babysitting. We would never complain to them about our kids. In all communication, we would put a positive spin on all aspects of life as we added three more sons and, daughter, and a daughter. Rita and I didn't live in denial. Our five children were typically kids 
with all the typical kid challenges. We knew that if a crisis arose, my parents would heroically step up and fill in any gaps. But as our family grew, we learned to handle the routine ups and downs of raising a family and trusting God that it would all work out for good. A funny thing happens when you start looking for the joys in life. They tend to come around more and more often. As it turns out, my dad's bold statement made me a better father. This was my family and the responsibility was mine. The second critical decision that led to an awesome relationship between my kids and my folks is that we never moved away. I fully realize that many young families are moving across the country for career advancements or perhaps to escape their extended families. If you feel the need to move some distance away to keep your sanity or safety, that's an entirely different issue that I won't address here. But before you move away to advance your career, think long and hard about how that will impact your family relationships. Not pursuing job opportunities in Grand Rapids, in Grand Rapids, Seattle, and Dallas were some of the best decisions I ever made. Fortunately, Papa and Mimi never moved either. I don't think it was ever considered. Even during the snowiest winter or the hottest summers, the fact that they had 11 grandkids within six miles may have, may have had something to do with it. We've seen firsthand the very real benefit of the kids living near their grandparents. Applause doubles at concerts, recitals, and soccer games. Grandparents who live in town read the same local paper and drive down the same street. That means two more people who love your kids as much as you do are on constant lookout for opportunities, events, distractions, and dangers. Plus, there's a serendipitous give and take. Lawn gets mo lawns get mowed, cookies get made, life gets shared. Cousins get to really know each other, mommies and daddies can get away for a weekend, and some lucky kids even get to run errands with grandpa. Which brings us to the third critical decision. My 60-year-old dad did not go out and buy a red Corvette to help him feel young again. He bought a minivan with lots of seatbelts so that he could take a pile of grandkids anytime, anyplace, which in turn made him feel young again. I'm convinced that was a choice he made specifically because he had grandkids in town that were a joy, not a burden. Worth nothing. He pretty much never took the kids to the zoo or, or amusement park. Instead, they'd go on routine trips to the supermarket or hardware store, or maybe shopping for school, school supplies. Papa's minivan might stop to get ice cream or feed the ducks, but it, it was always an adventure found in everyday life. He called it bumming with Papa. And it might be his greatest legacy. So those are the three decisions that opened the floodgates to a bucket of tears at my dad's funeral. In review, for those parents who want to foster that same kind of relationship between the previous and the next generation, here they are again. Choose to make your kids a joy to extended family, not a burden. Choose to build your life nearby and choose to build relationships during the course of real life, not once a year extra extravaganzas. In 21st century America, the family seems to be less of priority, but I believe a few wise choices can go a long way toward keeping our extended families together. This author has recently been thinking long and hard about that idea. You see, my first three grandchildren were born while I was working on this book. And then he has checking the list and it says, we have a responsibility to the young people in our lives and to our parents. Whether you're a mother, a father, aunt, uncle, neighbor, or a friend, we need to tell tales and share histories. We need to listen with love and speak with vibrancy. In the Old Testament, King Hezekiah describes how giving praise to God in a moment leads to a faith that endures from generation to generation. The living, the living, they praise you, as I am doing today. Parents tell their children about your faithfulness. And that's Isaiah 38, 19. Have you seen God work in your life? Tell the next generation and the next and the next. And then he's got a little check mark and it says, leave a legacy of faith. And personally, I think that that's a great thing to be on your bucket list. When I leave this world, I hope that my family and the people that have come into contact with me are inspired by the way that I let God work in my life and the faith that I had in him. I hope that my children see that and I hope that my children, uh, I hope that their lives are impacted by that and I hope that they follow in those footsteps and I hope that their children also follow in those footsteps. That Their goal in life would be to show God's love to others.
and the title of this one was make sure you're missed but I think it's less of make sure you're missed it's what I what I want to be remembered for and what I want people to remember about me and that's that I love Jesus with all my heart and so that's what I got out of this one this one was a little more serious but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, thank you for being here with me. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. The Monday and Wednesday one are Bible-based videos, faith-based videos, and then the Friday video is usually like a silly, fun, just me being me kind of video. So if you like stuff like that, then like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!